So the first argument I've seen from people is that structs did not exist when development on Heartbound began. Arguing that is, I think, a false dichotomy because it is not valid to say that in the absence of structs, we have to use a single giant array for the story and then another one for the dialogue and have no logical context embedded into our data structure. That is the problem, well, that is the main problem that I am addressing with the array is that integer indices or indexes do not give logical context to your data. There is no way as a developer, it doesn't matter how smart you are or how familiar you are with it, you cannot look at storyline element uh, one, four, five and innately know what that is supposed to do, what that's supposed to mean. The way that this has been circumvented for Heartbound, at least so far, is putting comments everywhere, which restricts your IDE features. You don't get autocomplete on a comment, and you don't get uh, suggestions on a comment. It also requires the use of, as I've said, these superfluous external tools. Specifically, it's, according to him, Obsidian, the note-taking app, and I guess Excel, because he's keeping things organized in a spreadsheet. Everywhere else in the development process, there is dimensionality, there is context to the data, except for the part that matters, which is putting it down into code so it can run as a game. The other thing I'll add is that it's been five years since structs were added. so. If we don't want to do a rewrite on what we've already put into a giant array, okay, maybe chapter one is an array, chapter two is an array, and then chapter three and onward, we have a more native, intuitive data structure. And then I'll also give a little bit more context to the performance discussion that's going on. Most of the time when you see people arguing about performance and they're talking about speed or fast, what they're typically referring to is something in computer science called big O notation. And what that refers to is the worst case scenario, meaning how your algorithm or your data structure processes information with time and memory, what the maximum input would take in terms of those resources. So when we say N, what we're referring to is the size of the input into the algorithm or into the data structure. So specifically that means 10 lines of dialogue, that's an N of 10, 100 lines of dialogue, N equals 100, so on and so forth. And most of the things we're talking about with Heartbound, they're gonna be O, N, and under. So if you look at this chart, you can see the really bad ones are factorial or exponential. And then farther to the right, meaning lower on the time expense, meaning faster, you have linear, O-N, log time, or just flat. And when we're looking at these data structures in question, these are the storyline array and the dialogue array, these data structures should not be used in performance critical ways, meaning you should not be reading from these things hundreds or thousands of times each frame. And because of that, because of what the correct frequency should be, there is no difference between ON and under. You're, you're not gaining anything at that point. And I'm looking at this from a more post-mortem point of view because we are now on year 10 almost of this game being developed. You can't take a difference like ON and O1 in a non thousand times per frame operation and use that difference to make a critical judgment on how to design your entire game. It just shouldn't be that influential. That's also withstanding the fact that hash map or hash table lookup is actually O1 amortized, meaning on average, if you scale the worst case scenario, if you scale all the possible lookups, for how often that happens, on average, it's 01 anyway. But that distinction does not matter in a dialogue rendering system. It just doesn't. Okay, last thing I wanted to cover is, I, fingers crossed, no more pirate software content on this channel. I will continue to talk about him if something happens, but 
The plan is to cover game analysis, dev updates for me, and then also whatever y'all want in the form of polled content, just letting the community vote. My plan is to move to a monthly schedule. I'll get more updates out on that specifically once I have something planned, but I uh, expect to see updates from me on YouTube once a month. Um, I also have my socials in my channel bio, so be sure to follow those as well for all the updates I'm putting out. And then most importantly, weekly blog updates. Go to mdr-blog.com. Every Sunday night you will see what I worked on for the past week. That is where my most up-to-date content on my game will be. So thanks again for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. Be sure to check out the vlog and have a good day.